Hi, welcome to Coding Bootcamp Python. Today, for lesson three, we're going to explore variables. So, um, previously we learned different kinds of numbers, uh, integers and floats, and now we look at the real world problems. We're going to look at variables through this problem. Let's say that someone orders a meal in a restaurant, and after uh, this person finishes, there's a bill that should be calculated. So in Quebec, we need to calculate tax, uh, federal, provincial. Assume that there's a 5% tax for uh, uh, the uh, federal tax and 9.975% uh, for the provincial tax. And on top of that, let's say we want to add 15% uh, of the price as a tip. So on the bill, we'll uh, see uh, the price before taxes, the federal and provincial taxes, the total taxes, the tip, and the final price to be printed. Um, the problem is more complicated than what we've seen before, and there's more uh, values to be calculated and printed. So, for instance, we should calculate the final result uh, as follows. So federal taxes should be 5% of the $20, which gives $1. Provincial taxes should be 9.975%. So that's going to give $2. It, get, it gets rounded up. Actually, it's 1.995 which gets rounded to two dollars because there are no such things as half pennies the total taxes are going to be three dollars then uh, the price with tax is 23 dollars then we add the tip which should be calculated on the price before taxes so that should be three dollars 15 percent of 20 and the final price should be 26 dollars okay so simple enough calculation but many steps so we can write all of this in one single line if we want. Um, so 20 multiplied by uh, 1 for the price of this, uh, 0 0.05 for the uh, federal tax, 0 0.09975 for the provincial tax, and 0 0.015 for the uh, tip. And you know this would give output if we actually printed this out. So this solution is bad. The, the formula is hard to understand. Um, especially if you haven't seen it in a little while. Um, what are these ratios? What is the meaning of the number 0 0.09975, for instance? Uh, is it a provincial tax ratio? Is it a federal tax ratio? Um, what is? What does it mean? There's a chance the tax ratio might change in the future, so we might want to have some flexibility built in. And also, restaurants can force you to tip uh, this 0.15 is a ratio which is suggested. Okay, um, so if you have to print the dish price, the federal tax, provincial tax, total tax, tip, final price, your code will be redundant. So it's possible there's going to be more errors, uh, especially if you need to modify the code. So what is the solution? Well, let's see. Programmers, they want to be as lazy as possible. So lazy does not mean working less, it just means working smarter. Um, so we don't want to repeat ourselves. You must write dry code. Dry code is don't repeat yourself code. You want to write the function or the code which does the work once and use it over and over again. You don't want to write wet code, write everything twice code. So in reality, we might want to save some of the calculated values to use them again. Also, uh, most values should have a meaningful name so that if we can't understand it, then just reading the value, reading a name, an identifier is going to help us understand. Uh, this is a principle that we call self-documenting code. So this is going to be one of multiple reasons to use variables. Variables, they are containers that store data for later use. Um, they can hold many types of data, such as numbers, booleans, strings, um, you know, different types of numbers, floating point numbers, integers, and so on and so forth. So variables in Python, um, these are called primitive variables, the ones that we just discussed, because these are primitive data types. These are the basic ones that are included with the language. Uh, they're like variables in mathematics. Uh, they're named symbols that represent a value, basically. And variables are always going to be assigned with the variable name to the left of an equal sign and the value to be assigned to the right of an equal sign. You can understand this as you put the value to the right in the container to the left. 
basically. So these are examples. X is equal to one. Balance is equal to 1,200. Score is equal to 97. Result is equal to three minus one. Name is equal to input. We get the name from the user in this case. Age is equal to int of input, where we get the integer age. So in this case, the user types something in, and then we use a function called int to convert that value to an integer, and then we store it with the equal symbol in the age variable. Income is equal to float of input, where we take the input from the user, convert that input to a floating point number, and store that into income. So why do we need to convert these two numbers? Well, so they're not considered as strings anymore. You can read the value of a variable. We can access the variable. So let's look at score is equal to 97. Then score two is equal to score one plus one. This is going to mean that score two is going to be 98. If a variable appears to the left of the equal sign, it is the destination where we write. Uh, and then if it's to the right, then we need to, we are accessing. It's going to be a source. We're going to read from it. Okay, we can reuse a variable once it's, ha it's been initialized. So once it has a value inside. So x is equal to 1, balance is equal to 1200, score is equal to 97, result is equal to 3 minus 1. Uh, these are all initialized variables now now we can read what's inside the variable okay we can also create one for uh, later storage let's look at this so we just declare x then y is equal to 3 then x is equal to y mod y so in this case there's not going to be a remainder because we divide y by y so then x should be equal to 0 so now let's compare two lines of code Score is equal to 97, score minus 5, that's line number 1. Print score, score is equal to score minus 5, that's line number 2, and then print score. In line number 1, we calculate the value, but we do not store it because there's no equal sign. So we are not storing the result of score minus 5 in any variable. So once we print score on the line, which is after number 1, then we see 97. However, in line number two, we do affect the value of the score variable. So once we print that value, it's going to be 97 minus 5, which is 92. There's also um, high level arithmetic operations that can overwrite a variable more easily. Um, so there's other symbols. Um, for instance, let's look at this. Uh, score is equal to 97 and score is equal to score minus five that's the one that we just saw but this is equivalent to the uh, writing score minus equal five so the minus equal is actually a decrementing operator where we just assign the value of score minus five to score in the example which is uh, tagged by advanced arithmetic operator there's also a plus equal, multiply equal, divide equal, and mod equal. So in these cases, what happens is we always affect the variable to the left with the operation before the equal sign given by the value to the right of the equal sign. So if we say plus equals 5, this means that the variable to the left is equal to this same variable plus 5 and so on and so forth. So how should we name variables? We just need to remember a few basic things. The name should be meaningful. A, B, C, X, Y. They're not good names because, well, they're not meaningful. Well, in most cases. Most of the time you should only have letters and numbers, right? Uh, although underscores are also acceptable. Um, if the price contains more than one word and you want to separate these two words with a space, then you would use an underscore in instead, right? So in, in the case of dish, price, federal, tax, provincial, tax, total, tax, final price, average math score, and so on and so forth. 
most of the time, the first uh, character of the variable is going to be a lowercase letter. Uh, you can use an underscore as well, but you should not use a number. It's not going to work. Okay, so um, let's look at this hands-on example of using variables and it put an output. Let's solve the restaurant build problem together. We should first create some variables that will store the uh, known knowledge about tax ratios. So here's a comment that the ratios are federal tax ratio 0 0.05, provincial tax ratio 0 0.09975, tip ratio 0 0.15. We're going to change that later. And the dish price is equal to 20. We're also going to change that later. Now let's calculate the federal tax, provincial tax, total tax, tip, final price, and uh, store these values. So the federal tax is going to be the dish price times the federal tax ratio, the provincial tax, the dish price times the provincial tax ratio. Total tax is the sum of these two taxes. The tip is the dish price times the tip ratio, and the final price, the dish price, plus the total tax, plus the tip. So now the code is focusing on the formula instead of the numbers. It's much less confusing. We can actually understand what the formulas are and what, what each identifier stands for because we actually named them with meaningful names. So now we can use this data again and display it. So for instance, we use print statements and we're going to have a string and follow it by a value. So the dish price is the dish price, federal tax, federal tax, provincial tax, provincial tax, total tax, total tax, tip, tip, final price and the final price. There are way fewer chances of making mistakes now. So everything between the quotation marks is a string. You can print more than one thing with one print statement if you separate it with a comma. So we're adding more parameters. So we have some uh, knowledge that we know ahead of time. The federal tax ratio, 0 0.05. Provincial tax ratio, 0 0.09975. Tip ratio, 0.15. This is the suggested tip ratio. And now we ask the user how much was the food. And we take the user input from the input function and convert that input to a float to then store it to the dish price variable. Now we're going to calculate the federal tax, provincial tax, total tax, tip, and final price. We use the same formulas as we have seen before. So federal tax is the dish price times the federal tax ratio. The provincial tax is the dish price times the provincial tax ratio. The total tax is the sum of the two above. Now we are going to calculate a suggested tip. So we're going to say the dish price times the, the tip ratio. And we tell the user a tip of this much. Notice that what we're doing is we're using F strings, uh, formatted strings. So the way we do this is we write an F before the string and then we write A, well, the string part. And then whenever we have a variable, we put it between uh, these um, accolade brackets and we write the format we want to write them with. So we say tip because this matches this variable tip. And we say that the format is going to be, so with the colon, we state the format for this. We want to have a floating point number and have a precision of two decimal numbers after the point. So that's the point two here. So we're going to show the tip here. We say this, this much is suggested. How much do you wish to tip? And we take the, the tip that the user actually wants to give as an input and convert it to a float. And then we take the final price and we uh, are going to uh, add the dish price, the total tax and the tip. Notice here that we're not actually checking for things such as a malicious user entering a negative number for the tip. Finally, we're going to display the final result. And this is done again using these uh, F strings, the formatted strings. And we're going to say this is going to be the dish price, the dish price variable, which comes from dish price here, right? And we're going to format it using a total width or a width of 10 
so this is the greater than 10 and have two decimal places for this floating point number we're going to use the same formatting for all of these variables and align them correctly so that our output is going to give something that looks like a bill with right alignment so we're going to show the federal taxes the same way provincial tax total tax tip and final price let's try this so how much was the food twenty dollars a tip of three dollars is suggested how much should we tip so I want to give five dollars the service was really good okay so the dish price was 20 feral tax is one dollar provincial tax is two dollars total tax is three dollars these amounts match the tutorial or rather the values that we saw in the slides previously and now we have the tip of five dollars which was the amount given by the user for a final price of 20 plus 3 plus 5 which is 28 good so the example worked so thank you very much for watching and have a good day